Hey everybody, welcome from North Carolina Zoo. It's Wendy behind the camera and Steve, we're your zoo adventures team. Hi everybody. Hey, that's awesome Wendy, thanks. We're gonna be discussing vultures with you guys today. Those amazing bald headed birds. And when you see them, they're flying in those really big circles catching thermals. Vultures, check this out. I know that Nikon is amazing, but we're sharing information about vultures. Really? We are, yeah. Right. And what we're going to do now is tell you a little bit about the difference between turkey vultures and black vultures, two that you can see very readily in this area. We'll do turkey vultures in general first. They have the reddish head. Um, in flight, they're, when they're flying, they're kind of like more two-toned. You can kind of see a different, a lighter patch underneath the feathers where the black vultures, just the tips of their fingers, are kind of light in color. The turkey vulture is also a little bit bigger, and on a carcass, the turkey vulture is dominant, unless there's a lot of black vultures, and that's normally what happens. A lot, the black vultures are usually flocking together. So another way to tell the difference is to look at the numbers. Usually, if you have a large number of vultures, that's going to be your black vulture. Oh, another thing, black vultures hunt. Sometimes they hunt. Really? When the turkey vulture, yeah. The turkey vulture, not so much. They're going to rely on their amazing sense of smell to find dead animals on the ground, carrion, and that's their primary diet. The black vultures, however, have learned that the turkey vulture has that amazing sense of smell, and they'll follow the turkey vulture. Pretty amazing. Black vultures and turkey vultures right here in North Carolina. Can I look at the elephant now? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Steve, for introducing the topic of vultures. Let me take it over for a little bit. My name is Dr. Beth Folta. I'm the Curator of Education at the North Carolina Zoo. And throughout this video, Steve will introduce a subject and then I'll come back and dive a little bit deeper with you. Let's get started with identification. To start off with, can you tell us which one is the turkey vulture and which one is the black vulture by looking at the pictures? I'll give you a second to see if you can figure it out. If you said the turkey vulture was the one on the left and the black vulture is the one on the right, you are totally correct. Good job. Um, now let's take a look at what helps us identify the difference between the two, just in case you didn't get it quite right. The first thing we look at is the color of the head. You'll notice on the turkey vulture it has a very red head, where the black vulture has a black head. The next thing that we're going to look at is the color of their beaks. Um, the turkey vulture has a white tip to its beak, while they consider the black vulture to have more of a bone-colored tip to its beak. Finally, if you look at the feathers, you'll notice that the turkey vulture has a mixture of black and brown feathers throughout, where the black vulture lives up to its name and just has sooty-colored black feathers throughout. All right, so looking at them sitting still in a close-up picture is a little bit easier than the way you're going to see them most of the time in the wild. Let's check your, test your skills with this next picture. In this picture, one is a black vulture and one is a turkey vulture. Give you a second once again to see if you can figure out which is which. Take a close look. And once again, if you said the turkey vulture is the one on the left and the black vulture is the one on the right, you are correct. Nice job. A couple of things to look for when we're looking at them up in the sky, which is, once again, the most common way that you're going to see them. First thing, look at their wings. The turkey vulture has what we considered a two-tone wing. You'll notice those lighter feathers on the edge of the wing, while the black vulture, vulture just has a little bit of a lighter color on the tips of its wing. The next thing we want to look at is its tail. The turkey vulture has a longer tail, where the black vulture has a shorter tail. Basically, its tail is the length of where it holds its feet. It doesn't really get any longer than that. Finally, there are a few other things you can look for in their behavior as they're in the sky. 
Turkey vultures soar for long periods of time. They can soar up to six hours even. And when they do decide to flap their wings, it's a very slow flap in comparison to the black vulture. Finally, the way it holds its wings is more of a V shape versus the black vulture holds its wings at an almost flat shape. And the turkey vulture is known to kind of teeter back and forth while it's soaring, and the black vulture does not do that. I forgot to mention, but black vultures are frequent flappers. You'll notice them flapping more periodically than truly soaring. So just keep that in mind, because often you will see a mixture of both turkey and black vultures in the same kettle. All right, hopefully that helped you learn how to identify them a little bit better. We're going to join Steve and Wendy back at the park. So vultures as carrion eaters, carrion dead things, sometimes see on the side of the road, animals in the wild. And look at this skull. That beak is what they use to tear in to that carrion, to those dead animals. Sometimes the first animals to get to a carcass are the vultures. Let's talk a little bit more about their diet now that Steve has introduced it. This is a turkey vulture, and this may be a common scene that you've seen before on the roads here in North Carolina. This is a roadkill deer, and the vulture, turkey vultures have quickly come in to get a fresh meal. Turkey vultures do prefer carrion, so that means dead stuff. They like it fresh over something that's rotting, but will eat rotting if that's all they can find. They predominantly eat mammals because, of course, it's more a little bit more of a meal, but they will eat birds, amphibians, reptiles, or an, even invertebrates that they find. And occasionally, unfortunately, they do eat human garbage as well. So that's their main diet. On the other hand, here you have a black vulture. And as Steve mentioned, they do occasionally hunt. So their diet, while still mainly carrion, will also include additional things like they'll eat the eggs of other birds, turtles, lizards, the young of birds and sea turtles, and occasionally, this is the real hunting that they get involved in, will go after a newborn of a larger mammal. So livestock is a common one, or a groundhog, for example. So they aren't reliant 100% on carrion like the vulture, the turkey vultures are. I hope that helps you a little bit more with a diet. Now back to Steve. So guys, vultures have so many jobs to do. It's incredible the number of jobs vultures are involved with. And it's more than just cleaning up an environment. Um, hey, Wendy, do me, when you go to the bathroom, or remember when COVID happened recently? Yeah. Yeah. What, were, what was one of the big recommendations we were given to make sure that we were not spreading COVID? Is this a trick question? No. Um, wash my hands. Right? Yeah. With? With? Soap. Soap and? Water. Water. Yeah. Right? I feel like this is a trick question. The nickname of the vulture in Africa is the soap of the savanna. Oh, I see where you went with that. They clean up the environment. They're cleaning up the dead animals because they eat them. And they can actually get rid of bacteria and viruses and all kinds of other things that are inside those dead animals. How cool is that? Steve just introduced the role that vultures play in the ecosystem, that of scavengers. Vultures are by no means the only scavengers around. There are plenty of species that serve this role, including, for example, hyenas, feral dogs, blowflies, and beetles, just to name a few. As a scavenger, one of their primary diet items is carrion, hence the reason they're often called nature's cleanup crew, nature's garbage collectors, or as Steve so eloquently called them, the soap of the savanna. Along with this, because they are cleaning up things that would normally be left to rot, they are helping to fight off disease. But vultures do this better than a lot of other scavengers. Their stomach acid is 0 to 1 pH, which means it's extremely acidic. For example, vultures can eat the bones of some animals and it will dissolve in their stomach acid. So they are able to kill off diseases when they ingest it that other species would actually get by ingesting the infected meat. 
Now that you know a little bit more about the role of vultures in the ecosystem, it's almost time for us to send you out to find and look for and observe vultures in the wild. But, for, but before we do that, there's two things you should know. First, how to identify the species of vulture that you are watching. We covered that earlier in the video. Second is some of the common behaviors that you see. For example, here you see a common behavior called cuddling. This is when a large group of vultures come together. It can be a mixture of both turkey and black vultures. They are riding the thermals to help them gain altitude. Thermals are hot air that raises off the ground, often in kind of a spiraling motion. That's the reason why it looks like the vultures are flying in circles or spiraling up into the air. Once they reach the altitude, the top altitude that they can, then they often go out and glide and soar, soar in search of food, as you see these two vultures here. Vultures are very efficient flyers. You'll notice that they very rarely actually flap their wings unless they're in an active flight, trying to get from location to location. Instead, they glide and soar. Here you do see a couple of vultures moving from point A to point B in a flight motion where they're flapping their wings fairly frequently. They often do this as they're heading to roost for the night or coming from the roost in the morning. Roosting is another common behavior of vultures that you'll see. In the next clip, you'll notice a bird perched in a snag, a common roosting location. Normally though, when they roost, they roost in large groups. So this is just a vulture taking a break for the day. Here is another vulture walking around on the ground. This is another behavior that you may see. They often come down to inspect stuff, checking to see if it's a food item. These were all the behaviors that we were able to show you with wild vultures, but Ziggy is flying in now. Ziggy is one of our animal ambassadors here at the North Carolina Zoo. He is a black vulture that was brought into a rehab center at a very young age. And unfortunately, Ziggy is imprinted on humans. In other words, he likes us a little bit too much. So he makes a great ambassador for his species and helps people understand the role of black vultures in the wild. Now he's gonna help us show you the feeding behavior. Unfortunately, we weren't able to capture that in the wild, so he's going to do it right here for us now. At the North Carolina Zoo, one of the things that we do as part of providing the best animal welfare possible is provide our animals with something called enrichment. Enrichment is designed to mentally and physically stimulate animals. In this case, we're trying to encourage Ziggy to do his natural behaviors of ripping and tearing in order to get to a food source. So this enrichment item is designed just for that action and inside is hidden some food. So let's watch Ziggy for a little bit so you have a better idea of how vultures rip and tear their food out in the wild. And then we'll turn it back over to Steve to wrap up the video. So why is the North Carolina Zoo interested in vultures and trying to save them? Unfortunately, occasionally a lion will kill a farmer's cow. And that's not good for the farmer. But what happens oftentimes is then the farmer will try to, will then poison that, that cow or whatever the animal was. Uh, and he'll poison the cow to kill the lion. But just the lion isn't eating the, the poisoned animal. You can see this really neat graphic this is the animal that was poisoned by the farmer. It might have killed the lion, may have killed a hyena or two or a jackal, but look at all the vultures that are also killed. So if we can track down some of these mass poisonings, talk to the farmer in the community, but then find the person who's providing the poison and stop them, we can make a difference for vulture populations in Africa. Hey, hope you guys have really enjoyed learning about vultures through this video. There's some amazing animals, aren't they? So many neat adaptations and stuff you wouldn't have ever thought about that they can do and help us with. And one other thing that the North Carolina Zoo is very proud of is our work in saving vultures. 
They're part of a SAFE program called Saving Animals from Extinction. And the North Carolina Zoo is actively protecting and looking to conserve the vultures in their wild spaces, which is really exciting. Dr. Corinne Kendall in that middle picture there. Um, and they use this neat backpack. Let me share this with you, almost right there, so you guys can see. It's a little tiny machine. And by tracking vultures in Africa, they can find out what's going on, how the population is going, and what else is happening. So again, from the North Carolina Zoo, thank you very much. Wendy and I are very happy to be with you today. Hope you've enjoyed. See you later. Bye.